So I received this email from uh, the FDA. Anyone can sign up for it. Let's see if I can make this just a little bit bigger for you. So you can see that a little bit, a little bit bigger. Now I received this in the email today, and and then I got the. Um, it was published also in the uh, Federal Register, which I will show you in a moment. Anyway, the email states, FDA announces CITOR's program to enhance agency staff knowledge of how flavors are made and used in tobacco products. The FDA is inviting companies that develop or manufacture tobacco product flavors to participate in a voluntary flavor developer and manufacturer site tours program intended to help FDA understand how flavors are used in tobacco products or developed, tested, and produced. The tours are solely for educational purposes and are not regulatory inspections. Starting on September 19th, interested parties will have 60 days to submit a response online at regulations.gov docket FDA-2017-N-3993 and dash 3998 or by mail to FDA's dockets management staff. So when you go to the Federal Register, this is what it reads. Let's see if I'll make that a little bigger without that going off the page. Yeah. So it's um, Docket number uh, 4164-01-P. It's Department of Health and Human Services, Food and Drug Administration, docket number FDA-2017-N-3998. Flavor Developer and Manufacturer Site Tours Program, Agency Food and Drug Administration, HHS Action Notice. And this is when they, they do a lot of notice, notices or any of that notice proposed rulemaking, all of that goes into the Federal Register. Anyway, it's this, this is a summary. Um, the Food and Drug Administration Center for Tobacco Products is announcing an invitation for to participation in its voluntary flavor developer and manufacturer site tours program. This program is intended to give CTP staff an opportunity to visit companies that develop and or manufacture flavors, including flavor mixtures, that are sold to tobacco product manufacturers in order to gain a better understanding of the development, testing, and production of flavors and flavor mixtures used in the manufacturing of tobacco products. The site tours in this program are not intended as regulatory inspections, the purpose of this notice is to invite parties interested in participating in the flavor developer and manufacturer site tours program to submit request CTP. And uh, dates uh, submit either an electronic or written request for participation in this program by 60 days after date of publication of Federal Register, which is, of course, uh, September 19, 2017. And then this is your address uh, if your company is interested in offering a site visit please submit a request either electronically or in writing to the dockets management staff hfa-305 and you see the address and then for further information contact carla price office of science center for tobacco products and this gives you a background to the Tobacco Control Act or the Family Smoking Prevention and Tobacco Control Act. Don't need to go through that because I go through it enough. But anyway, CTP's Office of Science is conducting the Flavor Developer and Manufacturer Site Tours program to provide its staff an opportunity to visit companies that develop and or manufacture flavors, including flavor mixtures that are sold to tobacco product manufacturers. Anyway, they're pretty much saying it again. Anyway, the goal for the flavor developer and manufacturer site tours program is for CTP staff to gain firsthand exposure to how flavors are developed, tested, and produced. Now, 
on November 8th of 2017, manufacturers and or even vape shops that mix their own e-liquids or really their inventory as well have to submit a ingredient listing. And uh, so you have October, November. It's very close to that. And I think the CTP wants to gain some insight into how flavors are made, how flavors are made. Like, for instance, maybe Capella. Um, what else is out there? The Flavor Apprentice. Um, even Wizard Labs makes their own flavors. Even even um, the Freedom Smokes makes their own flavor. I think it's called the Wizard. I actually have that. Uh, and there are many other companies out there that do that. Also, uh, what is that? Micro. Let me see. Make sure I have it right. I think it's called Micro Labs or, or Nitro Labs or Micro Labs. No. No, not Micro Labs. What is that called? Not Nitro Labs. Oh, Molecule, Molecule Labs. That's what it's called. Molecule Labs. Like mo Molecule Labs, it's an e liquid manufacturing. They do premium private label e-liquids. So, like, for instance, this place here, I'll share the page with you. These particular, uh, this particular company does all this. They, they manufacture e-liquids for companies. Like, if, if someone comes up with a uh, e-liquid, okay? Now, some some um, people that actually, like, for instance, I think um, Adora E-Liquids, she makes her own E-Liquid in-house. I'm pretty sure Smiley E-Liquid does the same thing. But there are other companies that actually will hire, like, Molecule Labs to make their own to, to, to make the to make the e-liquid and everything. In fact, here you go. They have uh, see the people that actually um, like Optimum Exilers. I saw I've seen that before. Volcano Vape Chemist Cutwood Cutwood. Is, Actually, I saw a video about a year ago with cutwood being made at this Molecule Labs. There's um, uh, this here where the mouse is at is actually uh, Phil Prisordo's uh, e-liquids. So he gets his e-liquids made at Molecule Labs. Uh, uh, Halcyon, I guess I've seen that. Anyway, so what they would do is the CTP wants to visit, let's say, we'll, we'll just pick on Molecule Labs. So the CTP is going to visit the Molecule Labs. Now, they're not going to inspect it, but I'm sure they're going to take a look, take a look and take notes. Uh, I don't know if this necessarily is a good idea. But I'm sure they're going to, there are going to be e-liquid manufacturers, especially like probably even Molecule Labs for that matter, who think in their minds they'll get somewhat buddy-buddy with the uh, CTP, and maybe that'll help them if they have the, if, if they get to the point of trying to put something through the pre-market tobacco application process, maybe the Molecule Labs or whatever company might think, well, you know, I have this rapport now with the CTP. What, what uh, 
what comes to mind is when they had the notice of proposed rulemaking from April 2014 and in 2015 when I was supportive of CASA, I was prompted by CASA to um, send uh, comments during the public comment time in 2015. I sent three comments to the FDA. And then in May 10th of uh, 2016, when the uh, FDA final rule went into the Federal Register, you see what happened um, with all those great comments that everyone left. Uh, the CTP, uh, FDA ignored probably 98% of the comments and only spoke to about 400 of them out of 135,000. And, um, and out of those about 400 that they responded to, about 99% uh, of those comments they disagreed with. Meanwhile, they learned everything, everything from those comments and also from one-to-one -one meetings with the FDA. Now, I don't want to sound paranoid or sound weird or like conspiracy theory or anything. But if you consider the track record that we have with the FDA CTP, and you see what they've done with the FDA final rule, if you go by history, and they always say history repeats itself, well, do we really want to take the chance of having history repeat itself in regards to how uh, the FDA final rule turned out? And this, even though it's not an inspection, I'm sure they're going to take down notes and they are going to observe. And I'm, I'm sure even though they're not going to cite Molecule Labs, which is an ISO 7 lab, I think it even goes up to 8 or 9 even, but 7 is really a very clean lab. <clears throat> even though they're not going to cite them with any kind of, you know, infractions or anything, they're still going to take a look, going to take a serious look at the process. I mean, they want to learn about flavors. I understand that. But why give them the chance? Or why give them the opportunity to do so? Now, of course, Molecule Labs is not watching my videos or any e-liquid manufacturer out there. But if anyone has any kind of connection with them, my best advice to Molecule Labs or whoever else is, unless it's a forced, a forced for good reason, for good cause, for them to actually come and inspect your particular lab, I would not let this FDA slash CTP into your lab, into your e-liquid manufacturing company for a tour. You know, if maybe possibly, if the FDA would allow the e-liquid manufacturer in turn to tour the FDA facilities on the White Oak campus, then maybe possibly tit for tat. But when it comes to, I mean, they're going to either have a limited <clears throat> a limited flavor ban in the future, or an outright flavor ban. I mean, this is what they're going to do, okay? So why give them any fuel? Why push that forward by permitting them into your labs? I mean, they're, go they're going to find out anyway, okay? In the sense that they're doing their own, they can gain access to e-liquids. And for instance, E-liquid manufacturers need to submit by September 30th, 2017, the registrations. And you have to give a sample of your e-liquid. And I'm sure, I mean, it's nothing to do with the PMTA or anything, but I'm sure they're going to have all the access they want to know what flavors are all about 
simply by the samples that are submitted to the FDA CTP by September 30th, 2017. I think that is enough for the FDA CTP. But now they want to actually tour your manufacturing facility and understand how not only how it's manufactured, but also how they how you develop your flavors. Who you know? I'll, you know, you talk about Raven Legion Network putting all these um, child appealing labels on the blacklist. I would like to say to Vaping Legion Network, if they come across this video, which I doubt very much, but if they do, I would like you to make a blacklist. My suggestion is make a blacklist of all the e-liquid manufacturers that decide to allow the FDA CTP into their facilities. Yeah, I would really like to know who participates in this. So when they have a limited flavor ban in the future, or they have an outright flavor ban in the future, you'll definitely know who to blame. So anyway, let's continue on here. So number two, description of flavor developer and manufacturer site tours program. It's only a four page document, so I'm gonna just read it. In the flavor developer and manufacturer site tours program, Small groups of CTP staff will observe the operations of flavor developers and manufacturers, including the development, testing, and production of flavors that can be used by tobacco product manufacturers. Now, if I continue on, now do it yourself, uh, flavors and all of that, VG, PG. The do it yourself, as long as it's for personal consumption, and you don't charge one penny for whatever e-liquid you make, then it's illegal. But if they gain uh, insight into the developing and manufacturing of flavor itself, they may very well do away with do it yourself as well, because you have to understand something. In the FDA final rule, it says very clearly that they can regulate and control, in fact, ban even, of course, but regulate and control flavors. They haven't come out to do it yourself yet, but they certainly can. Legally, they have the regulatory power to do so. So they could very well go down that road as well. Anyway, the site tours in this program are not intended as regulatory inspections. Rather, the program is meant to educate CTP staff and improve their understanding of flavors used in the manufacturing of tobacco products. It is anticipated that the site tours will take place in 2018. This is after the registration of the e-liquid manufacturers on September 30th, 2017. So I have a pretty good idea what's in these e-liquid bottles when they're submitted by September 30th of 2017. <clears throat> so by the time they had this tour in 2018, I'm sure they'll have a long list of issues or questions to ask these e-liquid manufacturers. I'm sure that the CTP FDA has an agenda, and the agenda is what kind of limited flavor ban can we have, or, or what will we permit in the future, or looking for justifications as to have a flavor ban. Not that they need justifications, they don't need it, but in order to not have a public outcry over it, they will gather enough information to have justifications in case they want to have an outright flavor ban. This is a not a very good idea 
for an e-liquid manufacturer to allow, allow the CTP and FDA co to come into your e-liquid manufacturing company without good cause. I mean, I can understand if you break the law, they can inspect you. Absolutely. No problem with that. But to voluntarily allow them into your e-liquid manufacturing company, as far as I'm concerned, when I read this, I was like, this is a very, very bad move on anybody's part. They are very, very bad thing if they allow the FDA CTP in through. It's not for the good, believe me, it's not for the good of the vaping industry slash community. They have an agenda. Limited flavor ban or flavor ban. They will decide which one. They're not going to allow, I can guarantee, they will not allow all the flavors on the market as it is now or in the future. They will have a limited flavor ban or flavor ban. If they have a limited flavor ban, it's from all this information that they have gathered in these tours or in the registrations, and they will pick and choose as to know exactly what should be in the market and what should not be as far as e-liquids are concerned. I'm sure they're just not going to walk through the e-liquid manufacturing company. They're going to have questions too. I'm sure there's going to be a rapport there. And even though the e-liquid manufacturer may think to themselves, great, I finally get a rapport with the FDA. I'm sure the FDA CTP, the CTP staff, has their own questions by the year 2018 after this September 30th, 2017 registration of e-liquid manufacturers. They'll have a whole list of questions. And you'll think, meaning the e-liquid manufacturer or developer will think, oh, wow. Great rapport with the FDA CTP, but they have their own reasons as to why they're having this tour. And they have definitely have their own reasons as to what this quote unquote rapport is all about. Anyway, let me continue on. So, site selection. The CTP or Center for Tobacco Products hopes to be able to tour small, medium, and large flavor developers and manufacturers, as well as companies that develop and or manufacture flavors that are used for different categories of tobacco products. For example, cigarettes, cigars, smokeless tobacco, water pipe, tobacco, e-liquids. Final site selections will be based on the availability of funds and resources for the relevant fiscal year as well as the desire to visit a wide variety of flavor developers and manufacturers. All FDA travel expenses associated with the flavor developer and manufacturer site tours will be the responsibility of the FDA or the American taxpayer. <laughs> sure, it's not coming out of their own pockets. I'm sure they get paid a salary. It's not like, well, for the during the site tour, I'm going to give my salary up. No. I don't think of it. Anyway, um, what's really scary about this is it's interesting how they word this. You have to understand the wording of it. So it says a final, final site selections. See, they're choosing which ones they're going to go to. Let's say a hundred e-liquid manufacturers decide to go along with these site tours. The FDA CTP is going to decide which ones they will go to, what will suit their own agenda. Like it says, very, very careful. You have to read this language. It's all legal. When it goes into the Federal Register today, September 19, 2017, it's written legally, legally. I'm sure. Mitch Zeller, who's an attorney, had his hand in this one. This is all Mitch Zeller here. So read this line. It's a very, very interesting line. When I read this, I said I have to do a video of it. Final site selections 
It will be based on the availability of funds and resources for the relevant fiscal year. Meaning they're going to do this not just in 2018, but in 2019. That may very well lead to inspections, actual inspections. As well as the desire to visit a wide variety. They want to get an idea. You know, they don't want to just go to tobacco or to menthol, menthol flavors. They don't want to just go to vanilla, uh, ripe banana, or strawberry, or cucumber. No, they want a wide variety of flavors. They want to, I'm telling you, they have lists they're going to draw up, especially after all these illiquid samples were sent off to the FDA in regards to the September 30th, 2017 deadline. They're going to have lists of exactly of the wide variety of flavors that they're looking for. Because in their minds, in the future, as time goes by, especially with these human, human clinical trials in regards to the advanced notice of proposed rulemaking, that wide variety of flavors are going to be condensed into a limited variety of flavors. Scary stuff, guys. Scary stuff. So it says, uh, four, request for participation. To aid in site selection, your request for participation should include the following information. A description of your company, including the size of the organization. A list of the flavors your company develops and manufactures. And the categories of tobacco product, for example, cigarettes, cigars, smokeless tobacco, water pipe tobacco, e-liquids, for which your flavors are typically used. Now, this is very interesting, very slick. If you picked up on it, I don't know. They're making it appear that, well, we're not picking on the e-liquid market. We're not going after the e-liquid market. If anyone knows about the Family Smoking Prevention and Tobacco Control Act of 2009, as well as the FDA final rule, especially the Tobacco Control Act of 2009, they did away with flavors in regards to cigarettes. There are no cigarettes with flavors, except for menthol. And maybe that's what they mean. But I'm sure they understand menthol in cigarettes. So we can exclude cigarettes really from this list. But it makes maybe makes people feel, well, you know, I don't feel all alone as an e-liquid manufacturer. If they're just going to go tour our e-liquid manufacturing plant because cigarettes are involved, cigars are involved, smokeless tobacco and water pipe tobacco. I can guarantee that their main focus, their main focus is on e-liquids. And I'm going to tell you that. I'd be somewhat biased on their part. But I'm sure that's their main focus. The physical addresses of the sites for which you are submitting a request and a proposed one day tour agenda. Now, of course, the manufacturer is going to have an agenda as well, but I'm sure the FDA CTP also has an agenda as well. Identity requests. Uh, excuse me, identify requests for participation with the docket number found in brackets in the heading of this document. Received requests are available for public examination of dockets management staff between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. And this was dated September 14, 2017 by Anna K. Abram, Deputy Commissioner for Policy, Planning, Legislation, and Analysis. 
So uh, Federal Register docket number 2017-19900 was filed September 18th. 2017 at 8.45 a.m. and publication date, which means it goes into the Federal Register officially, is September 19, 2017. When I read this, you know, this is not, this is not good for us. And I am, unfortunately, I am sure that there will be e-liquid manufacturers out there as well as developers that will allow the FTA CTP to take a tour of their company. Thinking that, well, you know, we got the FTA CTP in here without giving us any, you know, citations or anything. It's not inspections. Wow, I get to meet the FTA CTP. Meanwhile, uh, boy. What, what a naive, I don't know, I, I, naive slash gullible e-liquid industry we have. I'm sure there are going to be tens if not hundreds of e-liquid manufacturers that will take the FDA CTP at their word, thinking it's for the good of the industry, and allow them into their companies. Let me look up something real quick. Bear with me one second. I just want to read it for what it is. You know, the U.S. Amendment, the third U.S. Amendment, which is hardly ever used. I think the last time it was used was uh, i mean indirectly but it's uh, but it was actually uh, well because of the situation um uh, because it was for a good cause i i can understand what the um the national reserves uh the state troopers um the police officers especially well that's different though uh, because i saw it more on state level but i'm talking about federal government the National Guard, um, ATF, because of the firearms aspect of it, they kicked into place. Um, it could have even been some uh, secret uh, uh, secret servicemen involved as well, um, as well as possibly even some homeland security as well in that situation there. Maybe even the uh, Army Corps of Engineers, though. So, that's dicey, but it could have happened. Anyway, it reminds me of the Boston bomber situation. I don't know if anyone remembers that. And they were looking for these two bombers, okay, which they should have took both their heads off and not even given them a trial. But we live in a, a country of laws and due process and all of that, of course. But nevertheless, they were trying to find this one brother, the young brother. And so all these, the, 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 um, the military, because that's basically what it was, the military, I mean, it was different areas of the federal government as well as state government, but it's mainly federal government because the FBI kicked into place as well. Um, they went from house to house. And if no one answered the door, if you didn't come to the door in time, they're going to break through the door. And look for this person now I, I mean I can understand because they had a um, not only a, a curfew but it was really you know and indirectly it was martial law in Boston at that time and and the surrounding area I have a point to be made here I know you're saying what's this have to do with e-liquid manufacturing well just bear with me this is a very good point to be made and so they, you know, they went into people's houses looking for this this guy, this young kid. And um, sometimes they wouldn't even knock. They'd just go right into the house or the building or whatever without even knocking, just, you know, 
I mean, I understand the situation, the intensity of it. But there is still a due process. And there was a lot, I mean, a lot of people were for it in, the, in Boston, but there were also those that did not care for the military or whatever, FBI or whatever, to, you know, just rampage through their houses like it was, you know, like it was okay. Well, that really comes under the U.S., uh, the United States Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, the Third Amendment, which states, I just want to make sure I, you know, read it word for word, and that is, no soldier shall, in time of peace, be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. Now, I know you're saying to yourself, what's that have to do with tours from the CTP and the FDA? By allowing CTP staff into your e-liquid manufacturing company is in a way allowing a soldier into your house or into your residence. What this was, what, what, what King George, if anyone understands the history of it, back in those days, king, the king was not only uh, by law the king, but he it was a theocracy by divine power. He could do anything. He was above the law. He was the law. The king was the law. And above that law, he could even break his own laws. You couldn't do a thing about it. That's what was back in those days. So one of the reasons why we broke away from from uh, the, the British Empire, okay? And one of those areas during that time period was that if a, if the king said that the soldier can enter your place of residence without your permission, you had, you know, that was it. I mean, that, that was okay. If a soldier wanted to hold your ass, excuse my language, hold your rear end out of that house, place of residence, without your permission, they could. The king could do anything it wanted, anything. Anything he wanted, King George. And so they put the Third Amendment in, to prevent that from happening, because no one's above the law in America. That's the whole point, right? We're all equal under the law, or I should say, we're all protected. We're all e equally protected under the law, I should say, from the federal government, from the king, in a way. So here you have the CTP and the FDA, even though you're saying. It's voluntary. You're allowing the government, you're allowing the king that has regulatory power into your manufacturing facility, which under the 14th Amendment is considered a person, it has a right to sue and a right to be sued. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole history of that because that'll take about two hours to uh, explain that all to you. Because they are, believe it or not, as well, they're sovereign as well, these companies. But anyway, so you're here you're allowing the FDA CTP into your uh, company. Now, you're doing it voluntarily. I understand that. But once you allow them into your company, who knows what they're up to? Who knows what their angle is? Who knows what their agenda is? If you know they're going to have a limited flavor ban, and or, well, not and or, but or a outright flavor ban, why would you allow the federal government into your manufacturing facility? You think they're going to be there for you when they have a limited flavor ban? or an outright flavor ban, they're there to acquire knowledge. That's all they're after. They're after knowledge. And here you are allowing 
of course, with your consent, as opposed to the, you know, what happened with King George. But the whole point of the Third Amendment is to prevent the government from getting into your business. I mean, of, which plays into, of course, the Fourth Amendment as well. But it's mainly the Third Amendment that's sitting really squarely in place here. Of course, you're giving them permission. But I'm sure, let's say hypothetically, no e liquid manufacturer allows the FDA CTP into their manufacturing facilities. Every single one says no, or every single e liquid manufacturing developer decides collectively not to have any CTP FDA. Uh, uh, e-liquid uh, manufacturer, uh, developer, flavor, um, site uh, tours, tours at all across the board. No one allows that. How do you think the FDA CT, what, what do you think the FDA CTP is going to do? They're going to wind up with a limited flavor ban anyway or an outright flavor ban. But meanwhile, all you're doing is supplying them information to justify their position. Why give the federal government that kind of power? It's kind of scary. I don't know. But, you know, I have a feeling that the a, a lot of e-liquid manufacturers are going to think to themselves that it's going to help them out in the long run. But in fact, just like the FDA final rule, if anyone learns from history, it hasn't helped us at all. At all. In fact, no. So, anyway, I'll share that. Okay. So, it, it hasn't, hasn't helped us whatsoever. The FDA final rule hasn't. Okay? I, um, when I read this, I was like, whoa. I mean, I read it in the email first, and I put that aside. To, oh, I'm going to do that later on. But then I, when I got a link from the FDA, clicked on it, and then pulled this up, and I said, holy crap. This is not a good idea for us. This is a really bad idea. It's bad enough these e-liquid manufacturers have to list their products by right, September 30th, 2017. It's bad enough we have, they have to do that. Then voluntarily allow them into your quote-unquote house. <laughs> Scary stuff, guys. And I'm sure there's going to be hundreds of them that will allow this to happen to their own detriment. So if you have anyone to blame for the justifications that will come down the pike in the future, because believe me you, and you'll see it in the future, the FDA CTP will have all the reasons in the world on paper in the Federal Register or in the Code of Federal Regulations and list all the reasons, probably in the hundreds, as to why there ought to be a limited flavor ban or an outright flavor ban. And it was spurred on or helped or supported by, regardless if there, it was intentional or not, by these e-liquid manufacturers and developers. Anyway, I just wanted to keep you guys up to date as to what's going on here. I'm telling you guys, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Between this, site tours, and then you got the uh, manufacturer product um, listings uh, by September 30th, 2017 registrations, and then you got the ingredient listings on November 8th, of 2017. And then you got the advanced notice of proposed rulemaking, which is 
public comments, but also human clinical trials where they actually test e-liquid and uh, mods and, and different kinds of builds and tanks and all this on actual human subjects. Don't fool yourself. We're like, like uh, excuse my language, but like Dimitri stated on a not, not Another Rape Show, we're fucked. Let's hope. Let's hope. Let's really hope. You know, as Heavy Metal Vapor stated once, uh, prepare for the worst, hope for the best. That's all you can do. Because you got to prepare yourself. And don't ever think twice. Don't ever, ever, ever think twice. That do it yourself is completely hands off by the FDA CTP. That can very well turn into a ban on that as well. Definitely. Absolutely. We have the regulatory authority through the interstate commerce clause. And if you do it yourself and you charge one penny, you will automatically, even one penny, for your e liquids that you make for yourself, and you sell it for even one penny to someone else, it could be a family member, it could be your sister, your brother, your mother, your father, your husband, your wife, or your best friend, or some nobody on the street, co worker, whoever. One penny you charge, you become a manufacturer. But that line right there can also be blurred because if they're going to do a limited flavor ban or an outright flavor ban, then these particular places like eSig Express, Wizard Labs, um, many of them, many of them out there, okay? The only ones that really pop into my mind. Or like My Freedom Smokes, places like this. That sell flavored flavors for your uh, BGPG. They could very well have it so these particular websites cannot sell their flavors to consumers with the intended purpose of using it for do-it-yourself e-liquid, and you would have to. I'm sure they could figure it out, and I'm sure they will figure out a way that you you agree to it somehow or another when you purchase it online or offline, and that if you're caught, you could be fined, as well as if the um, let's say I pick on Esig Express, if they in, in, intentionally sell it to, to a, a consumer. Knowing that that consumer is going to use it for his e-liquids, they can get fined as well, even to the point of having their website closed down. There will be things in place, just like age verification with buying uh, vapor products or e-liquid in a brick-and-mortar shop or offline as well as online. Don't ever think twice that that won't happen. That could very well happen. Very well happen that the do-it-yourself market dries up completely. Because no company like Esig Express or Wizard Labs wants to risk their own company to sell it to do-it-yourselfers. Instead, they'll sell it to only maybe, I don't know, people that make food. You know, flavors that, that you use the flavors in food or in some other for some other for some other reason no I don't know how you can possibly use flavors that we buy for e-liquids that you make in food but or they go out of business or they got to get into a different line of business 
or they strictly sell the flavors to these manufacturers only. That's if they can get something through the pre-market tobacco application process and approved. They have to get some kind of e-liquid approved. See, uh, the, the twist to all this is we're so wrapped up in the limited flavor ban or outright flavor ban that if you don't get an, at least one e-liquid approved by the FDA by August 8, 2022, hopefully they don't shorten that time frame to, uh, because they can shorten that time frame from August 8, 2022 legally all the way to August 8, 2018. Now they can't go before that. They can't bring it down back to like, uh, I mean, they can't bring it to like August 7th of 2018. Because their hands are tied by the Tobacco Control Act. But they could take that August 8, 2022, and move it all the way to August 10th of 2018 if they want, or to August 9th, or just leave it at August 8th, 2018. So this is a, a very, very serious situation here. and to read that they are going to tour these e-liquid manufacturers and developers and learn about the industry is just very, very scary stuff, very scary stuff. And like I was saying, as far as a do-it-yourself, these companies like Wizard Labs or whatever that you know sell flavors, they would sell them strictly to these manufacturers that make e-liquid themselves, but you have to get at least one through the PMTA. Well, what's the point of that? And the chances of getting one e-liquid approved by the FDA is a long shot as well. So here you have, you know, all, all up in arms over a limited flavor ban or an outright flavor ban, but if you don't get anything through the PMTA and approved, it doesn't matter if you have a limited flavor ban or an outright flavor ban. It doesn't matter because you won't have any e-liquids on the market. Definitely past August 8th of 2022. Because you have to get an FDA marketing order to market your e-liquid. And the only way to get that is through a PMTA or it's approved. The product is approved. Anyway, this video went way too long. I only wanted to do a 20 minute video and I'm sure it's up to about 45 minutes now. Anyway, I'm gonna let you guys go, but yeah, I'll keep you up to date with what's going on here. I would really like to know, what I like to know is the, or, or the, what I like to know are the um, e-liquid manufacturers and the developers. Which ones allowed the CTP slash FDA into their buildings for these site tours. That's that's the kind of list that we need to have. Not these child appealing label crap. But and that you see through this document, not one word about labels. Nothing about labels. They're concerned about the flavors. I like to see them do a blacklist on these e-liquid manufacturers that allow the CTP FDA into their e-liquid manufacturing uh, or their flavor manufacturing uh, buildings or their companies. That's what a kind of blacklist I like to see. You want to blacklist something? Blacklist that. Because to me, they're like being almost a traitor to us. You understand? I mean, I and I know as an extreme side note, you're saying, yeah, well, you report everyone to the FDA CTP. Well, that's because you're breaking the law, okay? But what's going on here is nothing about breaking laws. You're actually voluntarily taking it upon yourself, allowing the FDA CTP into your manufacturing site. It's one thing if there was an inspection and the illegal manufacturer said, no way, you're not going to inspect my building or whatever. 
and then they you know receive FDA warning letter they don't comply with that then they go to court over it and then they're if they're in contempt of the court order you know, there's a whole different bulk but this is nothing this is nothing legal this is all voluntary big difference big difference you either understand that or you don't this is nothing legal in the sense that I mean, not even in the sense it's nothing legal because it's voluntary but I'll bet you after a while there will be inspections of these illiquid manufacturers and developers in the future and then yes it will be compulsory and then the FDA CTP will have gained enough knowledge to know exactly which e-liquid manufacturers they're going to inspect and what to look for and which e-liquid manufacturers to shut down and which ones they'll, they'll leave up until to the point of uh, you know if you're trying to get an e-liquid uh, through the PMTA you I don't know. You'll go, you know, you know, your business go down that way, I guess. But I'm sure these e-liquid manufacturers like Molecule Labs, which make tens of millions of dollars, if not hundreds of millions of dollars, will always be in business one way or another. They just won't be serving the e-liquid market that we know of. Anyway, I'm gonna let you guys go. This went way too long, but yeah. This is uh, scary. This is very scary stuff that's going on here. And I would really like to know the fools that actually fall for this. And I'm sure there'll be plenty of them. Anyway, on that point, you guys have a good one. Bye.